Finally, some good news from Germany. The pro-peace voices are getting stronger and harder to ignore in the mainstream. So just recently, Sevim Dadelen, who was on this channel before, got interviewed by the Berliner Zeitung, one of Berlin's daily newspapers. And in that interview, she really managed to outline the foreign policy um, guidelines of her party. So you need to know about uh, Miss Dadelin, that she is part of this um, Bündnis Sarah Wagenknecht, the alliance of Sarah Wagenknecht. Um, with Sarah Wagenknecht is this lady here. She used to be a member of the left, but then she split off and created her own party. And Sevim Dadelin joined her in that new party that also carries the name of Mrs. Uh, Wagenknecht. And um, Sevim Dadelen is kind of responsible for uh, foreign policy making or foreign policy thinking. She's one of the people who has a very strong voice inside that, inside that movement. And the movement itself, this BSW party, is gaining a lot of, uh, of traction at the moment. In order to understand that, you need to know that although Germany has one federal government, it also has 16 local governments for the different prefectures or states um of germany and these um these local governments are quite powerful actually because germany kind of um separates power between the different levels rather strongly per its constitution and we had two elections recently uh, just this month uh, on um in the first week of september and this was kind of a, a shattering moment for the establishment because not only one but two uh, opposition parties won very big. So the first one is was the election in Saxony on the 1st of September. The state of Saxony, um, we had a very close race between the CDU, which is the, the party of former Chancellor Merkel, and the AFD. And the AFD is, of course, the right-wing uh, party that uh, in, in Germany and Europe and in, in um, um, mainstream media is being decried as a right-wing extremist uh, party. Whatever the party is, it is non-establishment. Non and very importantly, the AFD um, is in favor of peace negotiations and negotiations with Russia and ending the support and the flow of weapons to Ukraine. So the AFD is a party that wants to tone, uh, that, that wants to wind the war in Ukraine down. So is BSW. And BSW, um, before this year, didn't even exist. It didn't even have a seat in um, in Saxony. And then they they gained 11.8% um, of, uh, of the seats. Um, in the or sorry of the votes in Saxony, you know that's that's a phenomenal start in a as a new party, right? And the CDU really only won marginally more than the AFD. So the whole talk in 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 Germany at the moment is what happens is if the AFD and PSW start working together. In Saxony, they would still not have enough votes to to uh, to govern. You know, the most important thing is that you need to. Uh, you need to have 50 or more percent of the uh, of the legislature in all in order to have like real impact in the um, as as a, as a government on the on this local level. So wh whichever two or three parties are able to form a coalition, they will then basically um, form that local that local government. In Saxony, it's not the case, but this is, these are huge opposition margins, right? Thirty percent and eleven percent of opposition, right? This is huge. So we know that there's a large percentage in these. Um, in these in the state of in the state of Saxony that do not subscribe to the current um, way politics is going and more more interestingly is even the Thuringia right which in twenty which recently also had um, uh, uh, elections on the first of September there the AfD even won the AfD won a majority of seats which is what outraged the foreign policy uh the, the establishment uh, political parties all over germany and uh, you know a huge outcry of oh my god we're we're going we're going right but you know all this shows is that germany is going anti-establishment at the moment and it's definitely going pro peace and bsw here again fantastic phenomenal uh, success with 15.8 percent of uh of votes for them um 
out of out of the blue, out of nothing, right? And all of the other establishment parties, except for the CDU, basically got uh, obliterated or nearly obliterated. And um, of course, the BSW, you know, together with the left, I mean, this is these are these are like left wing votes, right? And the, that's why it is so important now that BSW is getting more and more attention. And uh, Sevim Dadelin, this speech that she gave, or this speech, this interview that she gave, is is very indicative for what the foreign policy vision of the of BSW is. My uh, friend and colleague Andreas um, made a uh, AI version of this, and I want to play this to you. Um, here is Sevim Dadelin spoken by an AI voice in this interview. Please enjoy. What is the BSW's foreign policy position with regard to Russia's war in Ukraine? The Sarah Wagenknecht Alliance, BSW, is committed to peace and diplomacy. We demand a stop to arms deliveries and a start of peace negotiations. Every effort must be made to end the terrible suffering and death in Ukraine. Instead of backing a senseless war of attrition by supplying Kiev with a constant stream of new weapons, the German government should make Russia an offer of negotiation, a halt to arms deliveries in return for a ceasefire and talks. Putin has just reaffirmed his willingness to negotiate in Vladivostok. This should be taken seriously and not, as is so often the case, dismissed out of hand. We must avert the enormous danger posed by the war spreading to the whole of Europe and potentially the world. That scenario is a major cause for alarm throughout the population. 68% of the citizenry favors peace negotiations. Neither the SPD Green FDP government's foreign policy nor that of Mertz's CDU enjoys popular support. With regard to the discussions about Saxony and Thuringia, I'll say this on behalf of the BSW. There must be no more business as usual. We want a coalition agreement to stipulate that the state government opposes further arms deliveries to Ukraine, supports more federal diplomatic efforts, and stands against the planned deployment of U.S. missiles in Germany. A decisive reversal is needed here. For us, this is of fundamental importance. A new survey shows that more than two-thirds of Eastern Germans reject the deployment of U.S. missiles. People see the immense danger for Germany that it would become a battlefield in the event of nuclear conflict. It's a matter of democratic principle that the interests of the popular majority do not continue to be ignored. What do you say to the argument that foreign policy is a federal matter, so the states should have no say in it? Those who claim that the states have no say in foreign policy either do not understand our Constitution or make this argument solely to block all peace initiatives undertaken by the Bundesrat from the outset. And I'm not just referring to the state's own 130 diplomatic missions and offices. The Bundesrat has its own foreign policy committee, it recently dealt with a resolution on German-Polish relations. What should prevent it from dealing with German-Ukrainian relations as they pertain to arms deliveries or with German-American relations in light of U.S. missile deployments? The federal government is neglecting entirely all efforts to achieve peace here. The states shouldn't just stand by and watch this happen. It would also be possible for the states to take the initiative and call for a nationwide referendum on U.S. missile deployments, as the Prime Minister of Saxony has already proposed. Does the involvement of the states stem from the fact that this issue not only concerns offices in Berlin, but also directly affects the living conditions of people in the states themselves? The population should be involved in the existential question of war and peace, in the event of war, everyone is affected. No distinction can be drawn between the Chancellery, the Foreign Office, and targets in Thuringia, Saxony, Rhineland-Palatinate, or North Rhine-Westphalia. And that's why state governments should speak out and take a position on these fundamental matters. There was no debate at all in the run-up to this decision. Olaf Scholz behaved like a vassal when he signed the so-called joint statement sent to him by the U.S. government. We all, members of the Bundestag and the public alike, learned of his groveling from the newspapers. But this concerns the core of Germany's democratic sovereignty.
The decision on the deployment of these U.S. missiles would not be made by the German, but rather the U.S. government. The German population must be consulted in such an important matter. In the Bundestag, we, the BSW, have therefore called on the federal government to organize a referendum on the missile deployment within six months, or at the latest in conjunction with the 2025 federal elections. Will a general statement suffice? It's quite evident that a coalition agreement will require a clear message of peace in line with the wishes of the vast majority. Anything else would amount to contempt for the voters. So it has to be specific then? Yes. We're not the CDU's reservoir for wielding power. For us, it's crucial that a state government actually makes policies in the interests of the majority of the population. The CDU must also understand that a government with us the BSW, must bring tangible changes for people. Otherwise, such a government would be nothing more than a stimulus program for the IFD. Is it conceivable that Saxony or Thuringia could demand an end to the sanctions? It would be sensible. The German economy is currently in a dire state. Reasons for this development include the billions transferred to Ukraine, the arms buildup, and a disastrous energy policy, not to mention the self-destructive economic war waged against Russia. It's in the interests of millions of employees and those companies suffering most from this economic warfare to end the madness. In other parties, too, there is mounting criticism of this self-inflicted damage. At the state level, you could open up your own channels of communication, for example, in civil society or in academia. Would that be an option? I am in favor of having good neighborly relations with all European countries, and Russia is a European country. We condemn Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, which violates international law. However, we are also aware of the historical background and the problem posed by NATO's eastward expansion, contrary to its assurances and commitments. It's extremely unwise to burn bridges. We have the impression that the geopolitical aim of deploying U.S. missiles is to damage German-Russian relations permanently, even once the war in Ukraine ends. This explains why the Chancellor lied when he claimed that Russia, not Donald Trump, had terminated the NF Treaty unilaterally. But Willy Brandt didn't embark on his policy of detente from a comfortable situation either. That ought to be a model. It's vitally important to have more courage on this front. Given the current military situation in Ukraine, namely the rapid Russian advance, do you think it would be in Ukraine's interest to end the war soon? It's terrible to see more and more people die as ever more weapons are delivered. It would be much better to support the efforts of China, Brazil, or even the Vatican, or to take the initiative ourselves. It's essential to recognize that Russia cannot be defeated by conventional means, and that therefore the senseless killing and destruction must stop. It's time for diplomacy. Where could states take action internationally? The Bundesrat is represented in the NATO Parliamentary Assembly and participates in the EU's Interparliamentary Conference for the Common Foreign and Security Policy, CFSP. But if we look at the reality of the Federal Republic, we see that even at the state level, there are attempts to keep from government those parties critical of NATO, or those unwilling to bow subserviently to every decision made in Washington. The weekly newspaper Die Zeit, for example, is calling for a yes to further Western integration, where assent to stationing U.S. missiles in Germany is to be made a condition for joining the government. There won't be any such genuflection from the Sahra Wagenknecht alliance. Leading CDU politicians have called Wagenknecht Putin's chief propagandist and the Hitler-Stalin pact incarnate. How can one actually expect to be able to discuss anything together, let alone govern? The CDU is currently doing everything it can to make a joint government with the BSW impossible. The leading Eastern German CDU politicians have been trying for weeks to drive a wedge between the federal board of the BSW and Sarah Wagenknecht, along with the BSW's state associations. The attacks and abuse leveled against Sarah Wagenknecht by the CDU and CSU are indecent and poison the atmosphere. Arithmetically, 
Could the BSW and AFD push through a Bundesrat initiative for peace even without the CDU? Let's wait and see if the CDU is prepared to work together fairly. The BSW will not make the tabling of motions in parliaments dependent on those who may ultimately vote for them. In the run-up to the state elections, the prime ministers of Saxony and Brandenburg, Michael Kretschmer and Matthias Wojtke, and the top CDU candidate in Thuringia, Mario Voigt, backed peace negotiations. One hopes that they will remain supportive of peace negotiations after the state elections. So if both the AFD and BSW are in opposition, is it possible that one of the other's motions could be adopted? Basically, we orient ourselves according to the matter at hand and not by who is putting forward the motions. For us, if the AFD says the sky is blue, we won't declare it to be green. That gives you quite a bit of leverage over the CDU. You can say to them in coalition negotiations that if you don't want it, we'll go into opposition and push our policies through, motion by motion. As I said, that depends on how the CDU continues to behave and whether they get back to an objective discussion. The risk of a nuclear war is greater today than it was during the Cold War. The U.S. hypersonic missiles have no warning times and are capable of eliminating Russia's command centers. It would be utterly irresponsible to allow such missiles to be stationed in Germany. Unfortunately, the risk of an accidental nuclear war is no longer a matter of alarmist exaggeration. That's why we want Germany's federal government to return to diplomacy. But, because we know its attitude, it's now up to the states to appeal to reason. This is what the BSW is advocating in Thuringia and Saxony. In Thuringia, Bodo Ramelow has offered to work with the Christian Democrats. What is the left party's policy regarding peace? Bodo Ramelow has so far always supported arms deliveries to Ukraine and sanctions against Russia. I would welcome it if he were to change his mind. 